What if you have 2x minus 6, where x is equal to 3? Well, we just plug it in here. 2 times 3 minus 6. 2 times 3 is 6, minus this 6 is going to give us 0. And that's the answer. What if you had 1 half times x plus 5, where x is equal to 0? So I plug in x is equal to 0 in there. I'm going to have 1 half times 0 plus 5. 1 half times 0, anything times 0 is 0, plus 5. It's just going to give me 5. And that's going to be my answer. What if I have 3 halves times x minus 3, where x is equal to 3? So I plug this guy in, so I'm going to have 3 halves times x, but this is just going to be times 3, because x is equal to 3. Uh, so I'm going to have minus 3. So how do I simplify this? This is where you start to need to use your knowledge of fractions. You have something multiplied by a fraction here. So you have 3 halves multiplied. 3 can be written as 3 over 1. Don't forget to keep your minus 3 to keep everything straight. Now you can do this multiplication very easily. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 1 is 2 minus 3. So you have 9 halves minus 3. And that really is the answer, but you don't want to leave an answer like that. You want to try to put it into one fraction if you can. 9 halves minus, this is just 3 over 1. Now you need to again use your knowledge of fractions to find a common denominator and do this fraction subtraction. So what we're going to have is 9 halves minus 3 over 1. Now what do we do to find the common denominator? If I can take this guy and multiply by 2, then I'll get a 2 in the denominator here matching this one here. This is exactly what I want to do. So what I'll have is 9 halves minus 2 times 3 is 6 halves. So now I'm in a good position to finish the problem out. The, the top is going to be 9 minus 6, which is going to be 3. The bottom is going to be 2. So the final, final answer is 3 halves, but actually that's improper. So I can divide that. 2 goes into this one time with 1 left over over 2. So you can write it either way, 1 and a half or 3 halves, however you're, however you're more comfortable writing it. Some teachers will let you keep it in this form. Some teachers will make you convert it. But this was actually a problem that, you, you see where, where, this is where algebra starts to get to be tricky for some students. If they don't understand fractions, that's why I keep saying it over and over again, then this problem is absolutely impossible, even if they kind of know what to do. Because as soon as you put this in here, you need to know what to do next. You have to know that you, in order to multiply it, you write it as 3 over 1. Okay, so you do that business. And then you realize, okay, now I'm left with this. How do I subtract these? Well, if you have no idea how to find that common denominator, you're never going to make any progress. You might know that you need to plug in the value of the variable, but you won't be able to go beyond it at all. Now, what if we had 2x squared, 2 times x squared, minus 3 times x plus 5. So that's a, a nice long expression. We'll say x is equal to 3. But it's no different. It looks bigger, it looks uglier, but it's no different. We just take x and we put it in everywhere where we need to. So we have 2 times. 3 goes into x, so this is 3 squared minus 3 times x, which is 3 plus 5. So I'm putting x everywhere I'm putting 3 everywhere where I see an x. So take it one step at a time. The inside of the parentheses is going to come first. I'm going to square this 2 times. 3 times 3 is 9 minus 3 times 3 plus 5. Now I can do my multiplications. 2 times 9 is 18 minus 3 times 3 is 9 plus 5. Now I just do my addition subtraction from left to right. So what I'm going to have here is 18 minus 9 is going to give me 9, don't forget the adding to the 5 later, and then I'm going to have 14 as a final answer. And this is what I say where, in some of these easier problems, a student can very likely calculate it in their head. But if you even attempt to do this in your head, you're just asking for trouble. Eventually you'll make an error somewhere, and you'll just, you know, unless you have an extraordinary memory, you're just not going to be able to keep all this straight. So you really need to write every step down, because if I made a mistake here, I would be able to go back and say, oh, when I squared this, I did it wrong, so then I could fix it. But if I have, don't leave my steps in a nice trail, I'll never be able to figure out what I've done wrong. 